Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Acoustic, acoustical system shown below. Audio system. And the figure shown below is driven by a speaker emitting a frequency of 700 hertz. Okay, goes up and goes down. Okay, kind of like a trombone type thing, I think. Maybe. If constructive interference occurs at a particular location on of the sliding section, so we have constructive. At what particular location the sliding section, by what minimum amount should the slider be moved upward so that the destructive interference occurs instead? Okay, so we have an audio wave come in here, splits into two, some goes up, some goes down, and then when it recombines over here, it's basically the same as it was before. But it, it combines constructively, so there's no, there's no loss. So start by looking at this as a concept. Make ourselves a little wave here. Maybe go up like that. Maybe come down like this. Hmm, that looks like a surprisingly accurate wave. Make wavy. Make it to blue because it's more exciting and thicken slightly. There we go. Ah, this is kind of cool. And uh, too much, too much. Overdid it. There we go. Okay, so now we got one wave. We have two waves. And I'll make this one a little bit bigger. Does that work? Ho oh, ho, look at that. Look at that. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Okay. So let's say we have two waves. Just to add some personality to each, this one will be red. And the idea is the waves are coming together constructively. So it means that if um, the height of these are the amplitude, um, and in this case, the amplitude would probably be the, um, it's representing the strength of the pressure waves as they're going as the sound is going through the air. So this is I'm gonna call this R2, we'll call this R1, and if we know there's constructive interference, then I'm gonna call this the number of wavelengths here, I'll call it like N wavelengths, lambda's wavelengths, and I'll call this um, M wavelengths. And the idea here is that N and M are both integers. And so when they match up to each other, the peaks match and the troughs match. Therefore, the highs reinforce the highs, the lows reinforce the lows, and the averages don't really do much at all. And so this is what we're having with, starting with, and saying that, all right, we're going to move it such a way that we want destructive interference. So we move it kind of like the, no, like this. There we go. Yeah, I'll stick with black. So we get the maximum here, minimum here, and when they come together, they cancel each other out. Might be a little bit easier to see the other direction. There we go, have a minimum, maximum, and then they cancel each other out. And so what this is, is a half wavelength difference. So we want to move the top wave this direction, either direction, by a wavelength over two. So first thing you want to do is find out how big our wavelengths are. So I'm terrible at memorizing. Um, I know velocity equals distance divided by time. And I know that because my car goes in miles per hour. This is just dimensional analysis. So um, velocity, well, that's the speed of propagation. So that'll just be the speed in air of the wave, which it varies, but it's about 343 meters per second. Um, distance, well, that's going to be the wavelength because wavelengths are measured in meters or feet or inches or kilometers or whatnot. And then the time is measured in seconds. So I'm going to use multiply this by frequency. Frequency is one over seconds. So what we want to find is this one right here. Now they only give us the frequency and I think they probably assume that we can figure out, we Google, I should Google it. Nah, trust me on this one, 343. And so the wavelength of our sound wave here, this 700 Hertz is going to be, wait a sec, velocity, 343 meters per second times, now we want to get rid of this down here, so we're going to divide by the frequency. 
So it'll be 700, and I'm going to write that as 1 over seconds. Do a little canceling just to make ourselves feel better, and we are left with uh, meters, which is good because a wavelength is measured in meter. And if we're moving this slide up and down, ideally we would move, be moving it up in up and down in meters. So one wavelength equals 343 uh, over 700 meters. So now we want a wavelength over two. So for destructive interference, we want lambda over two, which will equal 343 over 700. So we want to extend how far this wave goes by one half wavelength. So 343 over 700. And then we'll multiply by one half to kind of capture this two over here. All right, so then we go to Wolfram. We do, let's do some parentheses here. We'll do a 343 divided by 700. And then I'll multiply by two on the bottom. And we get a, ah, fine, I'll divide 0.245. Okay, I'm good with that. Hmm. Oop, extraneous mark equals 0.245 meters. So now though, the question is, by what minimum amount should we should the slider be moved upward so that the destructive interference occurs? So when this slider moves up, you're going to get an extra bit of space here and an extra bit of space here. So it's going to actually have twice the impact that um, you would think that it would. So what we're going to do then is this is the amount of distance we need to create to get destructive interference. So we're going to do that and divide it by 2, which means back to Wolfram. Wolfram. And I'll just multiply another 2 on the bottom. Pow. And we get 0 0.1225. 0 0.1225 meters. Let's do a copy. Let's do a turn slightly because I'm extremely right-handed and then maybe I adjust it smaller so that no one can see it. All right, so then that would be our answer. 0 0.1225, I probably round to 3, 0 0.123 meters upward and that, that's because they have to, it's going to have twice the effect that you would, uh, that you would think. So then the next question would be, what minimum distance from the original position of the sliding will again result in constructive interference? So if we start with uh, one wavelength, go push it one half over, that gives us destructive. Go one more half wavelength over, and that will give us back to our original position, which will be um, constructive interference. So if you look at it from here, start here, which is our constructive, because they line up, moves halfway over, destructive, and then move all the way over to, again, another half wavelength, and then you get back to constructive. So we're going to move it twice as far as we moved it for destructive. So if I was clever, I would take out one of these twos that I put in. Alas, I am not. So I'm just going to multiply by an extra two, back to 0.245. And then our answer for the second one would be 0 0.245, double what that answer is. So when we have distance in the original position, it would again result in constructive. Now, one of the reasons they say minimum here is because there's, um, you'll get destructive interference at one half wave length extra, but then you'll keep getting it to it one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. So there's as many places as you want to get um, destructive. But it's easier probably to grade and be more specific and get the similar answers. They just ask for the, the smallest one. And the smallest one will be 
one half wavelength, which gives you this 0.1225. Pop, pop. I think I covered it. Backtrack slightly. So they asked, they're talking about constructive destructive interference. You need to know the formula for uh, how you relate uh, speed of propagation and wavelength and frequency. The way I remember that formula is uh, speed equals distance divided by time. I remember that because my car is in goes in miles per hour and I just do dimensional analysis. Uh, from there, we solve for wavelength. We find a half wavelength. And then we find out how we convert a half wavelength to whatever it is the question is asking us. And that's what gave us destructive interference. And then we do the same thing to convert from destructive back to constructive. Okay, hope that helped. I will see you guys on the next question.